Thank you so much for joining us for uh, a very unique and I hope very encouraging week of The Daily Dose. We're kind of calling this the what in the world edition of The Daily Dose. And it really comes out of, uh, in some parts, me thinking about the character Noah and all the different things that happened in his life where he had to be asking himself, what in the world is going on? And because that's a question so many of us are asking and as we're dealing with the craziness of this season, I thought it might be good to study people in the past and you'll see what I'm talking about. But just think about Noah for a second. Uh, God tells him, <clears throat> I'm gonna destroy the world, everybody except you. That's a little bigger news than what you and I are seeing in the headlines, right? He's got to be thinking, what in the world? And then God says, and the way I'm going to save you is you got to build this giant, epic boat. Not just a little boat. We're talking like a yacht. And it needs to be like a freighter because you're going to be saving all of the animal kingdom in your boat. I mean, we think we're going through change. We think we've got a new life plan that we didn't see coming. Uh, look what he's dealing with there. And so he builds this boat and everyone's making fun of him. And then God brings the rain and Noah gets this full on view of God's most comprehensive judgment to date. And literally all the human beings, all of society, all of town, the entire world as he knew it was erased from memory. And he's probably thinking, what in the world now? And he's, he's saved and so praise the Lord and he's on his, his, his ark and it, it holds out the water. And then he realized, maybe what some of you have realized over the last few weeks, he's quarantined in a small area with his family. Not only that, he has inside that confined place all the animals in the world, two of every kind. I mean, it's loud. There's no privacy. He's stuck with his family. Uh, it, what in the world? And then they land and you have to start all over. So you can kind of see how this started for me. I love history. And I think people who aren't into history are confusing to me. Because if you're not looking at what's happened in the past, in my opinion, you're walking into the future blind. Um, the, Solomon wrote in the first chapter of Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes 1.9, What has been will be again. So what has already happened, you'll see repeated. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. Doesn't that just burst our coronavirus bubbles. Right now, we all feel like we're experiencing uncharted waters. This is unprecedented territory. What is happening? Normal is gone, and will it ever come back, you know? And it's real, but we have to understand, and you, you understand this if you've looked at history even a little bit, so many generations have had it worse in every possible way. There's been worse diseases sweeping the, 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 the planet. Uh, there's been worse economic issues going on than what we're currently facing. Some of us have lived through worse economic times. And believe it or not, there have been way worse political climates than what we're experiencing right now. I've said it. I've heard tons of people say it. Wow, we're so divided right now. It's never been this bad. I can't remember a time when we've been this bad to one another. Actually, go back and look at the history. There's a civil war. Uh, you can go back even further. Even at the very beginning, things were very contentious. There was a struggle on this earth. And so what we're experiencing is nothing new. First, uh, Peter writes this in 1 Peter 4.12. Dear friends, do not be surprised. Don't be in shock at the fiery ordeal that's come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. And I have to admit, I was pretty caught off guard. I walked into March thinking everything was rosy. And I came out of March thinking, what is the new normal even going to look like? When will this season end? When we read the Bible, and I'm talking the whole book here, you see nothing but drama and struggle and suffering and oppression. You see warfare, which is probably the worst stress you can get, spiritual warfare and physical war. And so everyone that we've ever studied is going through seasons in life that are difficult. That's why the stories are so interesting. It's not everything was great, they lived happily ever after. They're going through really hard things. And what makes it such a dynamic study is you see God getting involved in the middle of their junk, in the middle of their struggle, in the middle of their world event. And he's carrying them through. And God takes these most normal people and somehow he uses them, even though they are flawed and make all kinds of mistakes, to be a part of the great story that leads to the arrival of his son and then the redemption of our world. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun. So this week, 
This is not your normal daily dose. I'm sure the staff will give me a hard time about it because I'm not going to give you a devotion this morning. I'm going to give you an invitation for you to go spend some time with the Lord. This week, as we're spending time with him, as we're trying to get direction, we're going to be focusing on people that were in a tough situation where they asked what in the world, and we're going to see how God led them through. Uh, The pastoral staff, we were talking about how we have almost unlimited material of people who are asking, what in the world now? What do we do now? And I had originally claimed Joseph. I was going to talk about Joseph, who's amazing. And Pastor Dennis kind of laughed at me. He said, good luck packing all his life into five minutes. Um, Well, Dennis, I'm going to do one better. I'm just going to do the whole Bible. And so here's your invitation to some special time with God today. I'm not going to tell you what it says. I want you to go spend the time with him. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, and I want you to read the Hall of Fame of Faith. You get this chronological story of the heroes of our faith. They're very normal people. They make lots of mistakes. There's nothing special about them. It's just the God that they love. And I want you to read Hebrews 11, and I want you to see what God has done through story after story, season after season, century after century. He proves faithful in the middle of our storms. I want you to read that. I want you to think about it so that you can see how God is here now and he's going to get us through this. And so here's your invitation for a daily dose today. Read Hebrews 11 and Hebrews 12. And if you want a a special challenge this week, you got a little extra time on your hands, I totally recommend you, you memorize Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, which says this. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. This is not the race we thought we would be running, but it's marked out for us now. Let's run it with perseverance, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He scorned the shame of it. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider Jesus, who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Ultimately, he's the one we want to look to. Look what he went through. Look how he got through. Look why, look why he did it. It'll give you strength to persevere and endure in this season that we're in. I'm not making light of it. It is a big deal. But we got to understand we have an even bigger God who has a track record of bringing resurrection in the middle of, of pretty desperate situations. Have a great week.